Windows laptop manufacturers have been on a roll lately and Razer just took it to a whole nother level with their first productivity laptop, the Razer Book 13. It's almost like Razer watched our Stealth 13 review and fixed every single complaint that we had, making this my new favorite Windows laptop. And yes, I do think it's worth the extra price over the XPS 13 for two reasons that I'll cover in just a bit. In this review, I'll tell you everything they fixed and improved along with one absolutely horrific change they made, which makes no sense at all, and it could be a deal breaker for some people. Along with that, I have to make a few comparisons to the new M1 MacBooks since those have made a huge bang in the market and even dedicated Windows fans are being tempted to change, but I'll save that for the end. Starting off, the build quality used to be great with older Razer laptops, but this time it is amazing with no chassis flex and some parts that used to be plastic are now actually all aluminum, coming in at a total weight of three pounds. I only have two minor complaints here. One is that the display is tough to open with one hand. A deeper groove would have made this much easier. And the other is that there's random glue residue on both sides by the ports, even though it was brand new, which is really off-putting on a $1,600 laptop. The Razer Book is only sold in their great looking mercury color and because of that, fingerprints are no longer an issue, at least on the chassis itself. On the left side, we have three ports, a USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 port, a standard USB port, and a headphone mic combo jack, which I really like being on the left side since it doesn't get in the way when I'm using a mouse. Thankfully, we have another Thunderbolt 4 port on the right side, which was one of my complaints in the past, so I'm really glad that Razer finally added another one so you still have a powerful port if you connect it to an eGPU. We also have an HDMI 2.0 port for connecting to displays without having any limitations, and a micro SD card reader. Now, personally, I would much rather have a full-size SD card reader, but micro SD is more flexible since you can use an adapter in regular cameras. And of course, it is much better than what Apple offers. Powering this machine is a new slim 65 watt USB Type-C power brick, which is so nice after the huge chunky ones in the past. And that also means that you can power it from either side. Taking a look inside, the keyboard looks and feels great. We have Razer's usual customizable RGB lighting which I don't really care for personally, but on the bright side, the backlighting is very bright, which you kind of need for white keys, which also show much more dirt than black keys. As for the keyboard feel, it is very good. So much better than what Razer used to offer a few years ago. Now, personally, I would rate it just as good as Apple's new Magic Keyboards, which puts it slightly behind the new Dell XPS 13s, the keyboard, the non 2 in 1 model, which is my favorite. With that said, Razer has a winner on their hands and most people will be thrilled typing on this laptop. And below that, we have a massive Apple-like trackpad. Just over a year ago, Razer had the the most frustrating trackpad that I have ever used in a premium laptop. And now it is one of the best in terms of Windows laptops, matching up to the new XPS 13, which is fantastic. Great job, Razer, for this massive upgrade. On the sides, we have speaker grills, which no longer use a cloth cover, so they both look and feel more premium. And then at the bottom of the laptop, we have this THX sticker signifying that the speaker should be fairly high quality. Unfortunately, that is not the case, at least out of the box. Go ahead and take a listen to yourselves compared to the cheaper MacBook Pro. Yeah. It is that bad. I don't know how this kind of sound is coming from a premium laptop. I know that Razer speakers were never really good in the past, but the Razer Blade Stealth not only sounded better, but it was much louder as well. We have no bass, the mids are very thin, and the high frequencies are way too sharp, and then the volume cuts down as soon as there is any bass in the audio, leading to probably the worst laptop audio I have heard in many years, and that just makes no sense because Razer made dedicated speaker enclosures that sit on rubber mounts, which many companies don't do. So why is the sound so bad? I looked into the settings and found a special menu for the THX spatial audio, and I was able to 
disable that, which fixed the crunchy highs and the volume modulation, but then at the same time, it made the speakers way too quiet for normal use, which is a bummer. Now you can crank up the EQ all the way, which does increase the volume, but then the sound quality goes down by a fair bit. I don't know how they could have messed this up so bad when just six months ago, I praised them for the speaker upgrade. Now, if you use headphones, it won't be a big deal, but for me, this is my only major complaint. So let's hope that they could fix this in software. On the plus side, Razer absolutely killed the webcam and microphone. It was pretty good last year, but Razer took a clue from our current situation and they doubled the microphones to a total of four, all of which are front facing. And the 720p webcam's processing is also fairly good. Here's how it compares to the new XPS 13. This is the microphone and webcam quality of the Razer book in a fairly well lit room. And this is the webcam and microphone quality from the 2020 Dell XPS 13. And to make it even better, it also supports Windows Hello, which we love. So it logs you in as soon as you open it. So there's no need to enter a password or touch a fingerprint sensor. And now now let's get into the display where Razer once again made major strides. Ours has the 1200p touchscreen panel, so you do lose out on some sharpness compared to the 4K model, but with that you also gain about 3-4 to four hours of battery life, which is a worthy trade-off if you work on the go. I've always complained about the massive bezels and chins on Razer laptops in that the 16 by 9 aspect ratio wasn't great for productivity, and now we have a beautiful 16 by 10 display, which not only gives us more real estate, but it also gets rid of that ugly chin. And because of that, we also have super slim bezels on the sides, Apple, please take notes for the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Now these changes alone would be enough for us to praise Razer, but they didn't stop there. Brightness went from an average 350 nits to a class leading 500 nits, and with that, reflectivity was also really cut down. So this machine is perfect for use in bright rooms and outdoors. And if that wasn't enough, the viewing angles are also super wide at 178 degrees, smoking Apple's displays. My only complaint as far as the display is that we don't have the DCI-P3 wide colors that Apple and Dell are offering. So if you're a high-end photo or video editor wanting more than sRGB on the internal display, keep that in mind. And now let's finally get into performance. And the Razorbook delivers with the best on-the-go performance you can get in an Ultrabook, aside from going with one of the new M1 Max. Our model has 16 gigs of RAM, which isn't upgradable, and a 256 gigabyte SSD, which is about half of what the competitors offer for this same price. Now thankfully it is super fast storage beating out the new Max even at half the capacity and with that it is very easily upgradable so for about 200 bucks you can pop in our recommended 2 terabyte SSD which is even faster. I'll go ahead and link that down in the description below. Taking a look at CPU performance, the top end 11 gen i7 Intel processor performs about the same in Geekbench 5 as the competitors like Dell that are also using the same chip. Now of course we would expect that, but what we didn't expect is how the Razorbook performs when we unplug it. The performance did not go down like most Windows laptops, it actually went up a little bit, and yes, we did make sure all of the throttling options were turned off on that Dell. This means that when you're on battery power, the Razer smokes the Dell, and not only that, the new vapor chamber cooling runs cooler and quieter than the XPS as well. Because of that, under 100% CPU load in Cinebench, the Razorbook is able to run faster and score significantly higher than the XPS 13. When we unplug it, the performance does drop this time, but even unplugged, the Razer performs close to the Dell with that being plugged in. Graphics wise, the Razorbook performs really well, scoring about a thousand points higher than the same exact GPU in the Dell when looking at Geekbench, and it also gets 9 frames per second more in GFX Bench's gaming test thanks to the better cooling. Now of course, the more expensive high-end Razer Blade 13 with a dedicated 1650 Ti has more graphics power, which can definitely help as long as you keep it plugged in to get the full performance. And along with that, the new MacBook Pro with the M1 chip also beats out the Razorbook, not only in terms of graphics as you guys can see here, but also in CPU performance as well. With that, it also runs quieter thanks to the CPU only needing 13 watts of power compared to over 25 watts. 
And because of that, the Mac will get about double the battery life as well doing the same tasks. So is it worth buying the Razer Book if you're somebody that doesn't need Windows? No, not really. And even though the Razer Book is the best Windows Ultrabook, the Mac still beats it as far as display, trackpad, performance, and it is actually cheaper as long as you don't want a massive SSD. But of course, many people need or prefer Windows and having the ability to hook up multiple external displays and also hooking up an eGPU, which can really boost your graphics performance when you're at your desk. Those are all things that the M1 MacBooks can't do. So if you're in the market for a Windows Ultrabook, the Razer Book is an excellent machine. And in my opinion, it is the best Windows Ultrabook. And as long as you don't need good speakers built into the laptop itself, I would highly recommend it. Now, if you don't need Windows, go ahead and check out my ultra detailed comparison to the M1 MacBook Pro or my video editing comparison right over there. And if you enjoyed this video, click that circle above to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Max, and I will see you in the next video.